It is my pleasure to introduce my friend and fellow Italian, Dr. Andre Kalachuk. Before you ask what kind of doctor he is, he's not a family doctor. Although I think he would be a family doctor with his personality and calm demeanor. Andrew Kalachuk holds a PhD in experimental mineralogy geoscience from the Russian Academy of Science and also he holds an executive MBA certificate from the Free Market Business Development Institute in Portland State Oregon University. State Oregon University. Uh, we met in the world of Rotary. Some time ago, I met actually Aunt Andrew's wife before I met Andrew. In 1998, Irina Akutenko was the team leader of a group from Siberia to come to Ontario, where I was located at the time. And uh, that was in 1998. And Siberia, I believe, is still one district. And if you know, Siberia is about 30% larger than Canada in the area. It is huge. So we met in the Rotary World, and in uh, 1998, in, uh, on, in 1998, Irina came, and in 2009, we met Irina and Andre in Edmonton during the Rotary training session for incoming fiscal government. By coincidence, we met again in Kelowna. That was in plan, we just both decided to move to Kelowna from different parts of the world. Our friendship is a great example that the work of Rotary does not stop within those two lots of four lots around here. The world of Rotary is international, and if you get involved beyond the club, you will meet people from around the world. I believe that Andy might talk about the incentive of exploring the Rotary world. Help me welcome. PDG of the Governor Andre Conacher. Country. It was a Rotary, Alliance, 
many sons and many others. Yeah. And uh, as you know, I guess you know that during USSR time, all of us were lived like in a metal cage. So we couldn't travel, we couldn't listen to real news. Uh, our, our news was not truthful at that time. So that's why most of Russian people, especially who waited the uh, coming of the market economy, they were eager to know more about the outer world. And Rotary International, of course, gave us that opportunity. But you see, it's funny, so in the beginning of the Rotary movement in Russia, uh, it was a still USSR, that's why uh, still bureaucrats uh, ruled the country a couple more years after that. And uh, the first club was opened in Moscow in 1990. And you see a banner, it's a Rotary Club of Moscow with a, a picture of the Kremlin on it. So I had, uh, there were many bureaucrats and party leaders. They became Rotarians in the first couple of years. They thought, of course, they heard from the uh, incoming visitors that oh, Einstein, Bill Clinton, and other famous people, they were Rotarians. They said, oh, why not us? So they, but soon, very soon, they found that this is an organization of uh, sustained people, professionals, business people, and it will not bring any benefits for them, just uh, duties and liabilities. So <laughs> that's why they left very <laughs> The Rimmel Rotary Club was opened in 1993 in the extreme east of the Russia in Magadan. From Magadan to Alaska, just several kilometers. And uh, you see, uh, in 2008, uh, Sarah Holin uh, um, went for the camp, pres uh, vice president campaign in USA, and she said, you know, I can see Russia from the, uh, my house. Yeah. <laughs> so, and of course, when USSR collapsed, Rotarians uh, and other people from Alaska, um, from small and, and big cities, from Anchorage, so they organized group of exchange uh, to uh, Russian Far East. And uh, Rotarians uh, told them, yeah, why not? Let's start a Rotary Club in Magadan. So it will be for you like a window in the outer world, what you want. And it happened. And uh, on a picture in a pink jacket, it's uh, Nadia Dapap. She was at the time a counselor in Magadan, but she's still a very active Rotarian in Moscow. They organized the Moscow East Rotary Club. It's a, a club of the um, newcomers from the old parts of Russia to Moscow. So, uh, as I told you, so people were eager to know about outer world in Russia at that time. That's why most of Rotarians were represented from the business then uh, linguists of English language because they, they don't English only by books and uh, phones. Yeah, so they wanted to know more about countries uh, whose language uh, they, they teach. Uh, some executives, it, it's very funny that uh, red directors, maybe you've heard this term, red directors, it's a former uh, Soviet directors of former uh, Soviet industrial companies. We call them red directors. So they just got, as they will, their enterprise. So they just transited uh, to the ownership of the enterprise. And of course, uh, they had all old mentality. So they couldn't, and they didn't want to join us. So I approached a couple of them in my town in Bargovicius, and they told me, oh, we have an uh, association of directors of the enterprises and we gather every week we, we spend time in a sauna, drink beer and something else. Yeah, so why we have to go to Rotary? I told you beside my uh, sauna you can uh, help your citizens, yeah, make a project or we can do uh, charity, uh, char right, social projects for ourselves. So those people they couldn't understand that sharing your experience, your skills, your money with the people around the world is completely different and with some with your friends from the Rotary Club. Because uh, during all my uh, Rotary life, I use an expression, without Rotary, you will never know 
people even from your own town. Because you, you are tied to your vocation. But in Rotary, you see here, every of us represents different kinds of activity. So, and through uh, us, we know what's happening in Kaluna. The same uh, came to, to Russia. So people started to learn about the community where they, uh, they live. And, uh, you know, of course we still have like a destiny of the USSR time. So that's why it was very important to choose a subject of our help. Yeah, and we decided that children would be the best subject to our social projects. Because uh, mm, after the collapse of USSR, many people they lost their job, and uh, many children, they just were starving, and they became part of the very mm, poverty uh, families. So they, many of them, they were out of support from the families and the government. And we decided to help them from the beginning of the, the uh, of when mama delivered them in the uh, maternity hospitals here and uh, to the adult time, especially when they had some disabilities. So it was actually accepted by our uh, friend Rotarians from Alaska because that time, that time uh, we were part of the District 5010. This district uh, from 1993 to uh, 2012, it was a district uh, which uh, includes still now Alaska and Yukon territory of Canada. So, and uh, when they included some, several clubs from the east of Russia, it, it became the biggest in the world territory district, multinational, real multinational. Our district is multinational, yeah, so it was not no, international. We have American clubs inside our district. But there's the Alaska side. And of course it was very difficult for governors from Alaska to travel because every governor should visit at least one time every club in their district. Yeah. And uh, uh, from year to year it was more difficult to find the people from Alaska who will, who will be able, even, even able physically, to travel during a month to visit all clubs in the district. Yeah, that's why actually um, uh, they suggested, they told us, guys in Russia, so we help you to start, but we want that sooner or later you will be independent, you will create your own district and you will be in charge for their uh, life uh, and their projects yourself. So, and in western part of Russia, so in the beginning, after the collapse in USSR, uh, there were three districts. And those districts was one from Finland and, and two from Sweden. So they took uh, attention for rotary development in the western part of Russia. So you see the white part of Russia is uh, Alaska uh, responsibility, and then three districts at the west belong to the western countries. And of course, for us it was easier to cooperate, for us from uh, Far East of Russia, it was easier to cooperate with Alaska because English language was much more common language here to us. But uh, for Western Rotarians, yeah, they couldn't speak Swedish or Finnish. And uh, for presidents it was very difficult to participate in the presidential -like training. Yeah, so, so many problems. That's why uh, in 2006, the first Russian district was created in the western part, and to the left is Andrei Danilenko, first uh, governor of the, that district, and uh, I became a district governor in 2012 uh, in the eastern Russia. The so only what unites me with the Tan uh, Tanaka is a huge accent yeah, in English. <laughs> so because he's Chinese. <laughs> So, and uh, now you can see it, from that time, actually in Russia there were two districts. Yeah, so my district included six time zones. And uh, actually, yeah. but actually, you see, I'm a, my background, uh, as we told, is in geology, geoscience, so I traveled already in many parts of the USSR in Russia, but I was very uh, happy to see many towns, much more towns, 
in, in Russia because I found it, it's like in Canada. You see, some, somebody told me recently that people from Manitoba, they are different than people from the sea. The same uh, in Russia. So people from West Siberia, East Siberia, far east of Russia, extreme east of Russia, they are different. And then more colder climate, they're more kind people. <laughs> 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 yeah. But it happens, they are more eager to help. <laughs> yeah, that's why we, uh, for that time we had much more uh, Russian clubs in the Kamchatka, Sakhalin Island, yeah, uh, northeast of Russia. So, but uh, for that time, you see, we had uh, 81 Rotary clubs altogether in Russia and 1,500 Rotarians. According to the Rotary Mass, 1,500 is enough just for one district. So that's why we got the status of the pilot district in the east and in the west. So our task uh, was given to us, Rotary International, to open more clubs and to recruit more Rotarians. But unfortunately, you see, it's uh, 2012, it's a year when uh, Putin started to turn on NAS more hard. And in 2006, for example, uh, representatives' offices of the United, United States uh, International Development, USAID, so it was closed. And many other uh, foreign organizations were forced to get out from Russia. So, and uh, less and less people uh, claimed a desire to become a terrorists. So unfortunately, instead of growing, we had a uh, decline oh, yeah. of uh, Rotary Clubs and the Rotarians. So that's why uh, our district in the East uh, stopped to be a district in 2016. And Rotary went on a very unusual step. They gave us a status of uh, territory of Rotary development. There is no official status in our uh, constitution of the Rotary, but they gave us a chance here uh, to continue three, four years uh, to find solutions on uh, how to become um, more sustainable. Uh, and so we uh, started to think what to do, how to attract uh, Russian people, business people, to Rotary. And we found that we can use still existing desire to know more uh, about the planet and you know, the countries, to be involved in international projects. And we choose these uh, directions of activity as a main uh, um, core uh, to attract people. So friendship clubs, so for example, we have this, yeah, two clubs, for example, Kalona, can sign a friendship agreement with the Nature Rotary Club yeah, and visit each other, have some joint project and so on. Then sister clubs, sister districts, when I was a governor, so I signed agreement with the sister district relationship with the Taiwan in Taipei district and with the uh, South Korean club in, in Seoul and we arranged uh, exchanges all together, we had a, a joint social projects in Russia and in their countries, so for that time uh, Russian Rotarians were, uh, were ready to help uh, to participate in social projects in other countries, not only in their own one. So international fellowship, I guess we don't use it uh, a lot even in our club, but there is a lot of international fellowships uh, in card game, bridge, in golfing, in yachting, and so on. Yeah. So, and uh, peace scholarship. So we attracted uh, young people, scholars, uh, who were working on their PhD about the conflict resolution. So we gave them a, a, a scholarship to go there to study and then return and become veterans and help in these issues. Yeah. Uh, and friendship exchange. Yeah, I agree with Bernd. It's an excellent program. We had nine students in my family. And you see, it was for me, it was opening of the world. We had students from Mexico, Brazil, Japan, Canada, USA, Belgium, France. Uh, yeah, so my son. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and what, what they're doing now? 
my fellow Europeans. So they uh, invite still guests from other countries, Europeans, and they show them golden ring. They, they, they try to tell them that uh, Rotary in Russia are outside of the politics, so we, are, we do not support uh, current activity or, or current propaganda. So we uh, belong uh, and built our life according to the Rotary principles and motto. And uh, international country committee. So it's a very common movement. Uh, not known in North International here, yeah, but you see France, Italy, so European countries and European districts, they have a lot of such committees. And again, it's, a, it's a just uh, unofficial opportunity to make a friendship with the clubs in other countries. So, and we had even an uh, inter-country committee with Canada. Uh, last year it was postponed after the beginning of the war, but, but we, still, we still have it. So what to tell about the future? Future is unclear. It's like the future of the whole country. So, and uh, even it will be finished today, everything. Yeah. It will take four or five years, not more, not less, to restore relationships of Russia with other countries. So we'll see what will happen. But the, we are very, I'm very happy that we have uh, more than 5,000 people who during these years went through the Rotary. 1,500 are active Rotarians now who know about the, our principles and our desire to support the world, support uh, the uh, poor countries, support children and other people here to follow the uh, United Nations here principles. So thank you very much. And a uh, couple of words about my locations here. You see, uh, I was in, I lived in transition time, and Chinese they usually they said that wishing to when they hate people, I wish you to live in transition time, because transition is not good to everybody. Yeah, but so I uh, I was I lived during the transition. I had five seven different vacations here, yeah. and, and now I just uh, cooperate with the two organizations, Five E Solution and uh, Avalon Alliance. So we. Uh, have a very nice professional uh, group of people and we try to develop uh, strategies uh, for the green and sustainable economy for small communities in Canada and in BC. So this is what I'm doing now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I was there several times because you see there was a time yeah as, as I mentioned uh, there was a time in my life when I cooperated with the Portland State University and first flights from uh, Russia was through Magadan to Seattle so I made uh, several stops in Magadan. I understand that it's not a resort community but it's more industrial and like Anchorage, perhaps, at the same uh, Yeah, it's a, it's a fishing, it's a lumber industry, it's a gold mining very active, and other metals, yeah. It's very active, yeah. And very, very kind of people. Any more questions? <laughs> well, oh, Chuck? <clears throat> well, I don't know if it's a question, but I was the chair of the uh, Group Study Exchange in Paris, uh, Many years ago, when we had a group of uh, study group uh, from uh, Kamchatka. Yes, yes, Kamchatka, semi island. And, uh, and there were really, uh, there was five of them, and they came uh, to Prince Rupert, and we toured them around the Pacific Northwest. But it's, uh, and they really enjoyed it. it was, um, for those of you who don't know what group study exchange, we don't do it very often anymore, and we don't, we don't do it. And the other thing is, is, is that you mentioned about communist countries. When we were in, uh, in, in uh, uh, Burma, or uh, it's now known as uh, Myanmar, uh, we, uh, we, took, we had a, a Morley and I and uh, a bunch of other people on our committee. We sent a uh, container, and of course, when the military took over Myanmar, it became 
communist, and we could not start a Rotary Club there, but we could have, because we talked to so many people that wanted to do Rotary, but they, they wouldn't allow us to do it. And the reason is, is because they want to know, you know, they want to get into your books. If you start a Rotary Club there, they want to know what's, you know, how much money you're, 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 uh, you're gathering together, and how you're spending it, and who you're spending it on, and of course, we couldn't do that. Yes, right. it's a problem to work with the developing countries here because uh, it's, the activity is not transparent sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, Simon, would you come up and thank the speaker? <coughs> thank you, President John. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much for the uh, insight into Russia and trying times that we all have. It's very nice to hear that there is maybe some hope in the country and an opportunity to find connection between uh, not people you find you have something in common with, other Rotarians. A lot of struggle uh, to keep it going, but um, hopefully that can resolve more going forward. Thanks very much for today. Thank you.